and we're live. Good evening everybody. Welcome to the studio this evening on this slightly cooler Friday evening here in the UK in Yorkshire where we're doing a really hot <laughs> I've just realised this is Africa. It's meant to be hot there. Anyway, right, pyrography. So we're going to make, make it hotter, heat things up a little bit. So let's, to borrow from the uh, Ghostbusters, heat them up, heat them up. Right. So one thing I realised is I've done some grass here and need a little bit of a shadow behind them just to uh, increase the uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Realism. I'll just put a, a, a few little dabs of, uh, of dark in. And it looks a lot better because they then look they've then got a shadow. And just something as simple as that can uh, can make a big difference. Right, next thing to do some work on is the elephant itself. And it's going to be a case of maybe tipping this up a little bit so we don't get as much brightness off the light. It makes it a bit easier to see. But we need to add some more uh, some more darkness into this elephant. It's rather bright. What we're seeing here is um, shadow of the tusk and then shadow because of the shape of the, the face and a little bit of dark area which is mainly dark skin around the elephant itself around the, the eye and then we need to a little bit of the skull shaping around the top. So I've got this tool turned down which is good. I'll just cool it off a little bit. So we've got an eye socket. Sort of over the top. around here so it's just mm, shading more than anything there's a slight indentation Uh, just applying a light colour at the moment. 
Do I want it too dark until I um, see what what the shape looks like and also what uh, colours are around it? Lighter colours are easy to make dark. Darker colours are not easy to make light. I just want to apply a little bit of shading around the eye. We again, there's kind of a um, I hesitate to say cut out, but there's a there's a passage, a uh, slight indentation alongside the trunk here, which the way it looks like it uh, from reference pictures is it makes it easier for the elephant to see forward, um, like your own eye socket does really. Now I'm just looking at some of the my reference pictures. Some of them is some of the, some of the shadowing is uh, can't work out how some of the shadows are working off my reference pictures um, to, with to do with the eyes. So when I start looking at uh, uh, this one, for example, the scene it, it's a sort of. Hmm, there is sort of shadowing going on uh, to do with where the sun is and I'm just um, sort of looking at like dark eyes that come forward but there seems to be a line across here and um, you can sort of see it on here it's kind of a well that's the bone structure underneath I guess but there almost is a line across and uh, on, on some of the others I've got as well it looks looks the same uh, and I'm kind of wondering where that line comes from. Um, not understanding it makes it a little bit awkward. Just a little bit because with not understanding where it comes from it's hard to portray it properly sometimes. And... Uh, I'm not sure if it's an artifact of the skin, the shadow. Or just you know, just darker darker skin colour maybe. Could be yeah, uh, could be doing this. Okay, so yeah, we've got. I'm going to put some lines in around the eye, I think, because we've got to emphasise the fact that it's in, there's eyelids and, and things involved.
Okay, so... Kind of, it's got a kind of like a, a tear. Seems to be like a teardrop shape around the eyes, almost. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's almost as though the elephant's squinting a little bit, probably a little bit too bright on the <laughs> bright sunlight it's looking into. So it's um, screwing up its eyes a little bit. Elephants appear to have eyelashes, so I want to darken around there a little bit. And this area under, under here is kind of like under the eyeball. As the elephant's got the reference one I'm looking at anyway. The elephant's got eye bags, or bags under its eyes, probably from all the bright sunlight. We'll do some more detail on the eye a little bit later on, I think. Uh, yeah, that's sort of heading, yeah. As you'll have realised by now, I sometimes talk to myself while I'm doing that. I'm kind of talking to the piece, working out where things go. So I'll kind of talk in like a shorthand as long as, oh, yeah, it goes and uh, stuff like that. And it really is just a, a thought process that's... I can't even articulate particularly what the thought process is. It's just sort of going on in my head um, as I place place things uh, exactly how I want them to appear. Or how I'd like them to appear rather than want them to appear. Which of course is a very slight difference. Let's have a look. Let me have a look at that on the stream window. Okay, uh, top half of the eyes are got a line running across. It needs to come down a little bit, but we're starting to get that sort of eye sockety look in there, which is good. So doing this with a relatively cool tool, now you don't want this the colour to build up too quickly. I want to be able to control it 
and have fairly light colour. So the cooler I can get away with it having the tool, the um, the more careful I can be with applying shade and getting a, a sort of a, a reasonable graduation. <laughs> Woofy Twiglet <laughs> Pyrography Thank you very much for that comment Welcome to the studio this evening Nice of you to drop in and to, uh, to come in Thank you um, We're just working on the elephant That's This is the main element that's left now The, the head of the elephant The trunk itself is um, Okay Might do a little bit more um, there's a bit more texture visible than you're possibly seeing on the stream here. Um, there's, there's lines around here which are showing off the crease of the, the skin of the elephant because it's bent so much. Um, but I might make that a little bit more visible so that they, they stand out a little bit more from a distance rather than needing to be really up close to the piece. But mainly working on the elephant's head in this sort of area around here. It's really bright at the moment. It's too white. Um, and there's not a lot of shape on the head. So we need to, you can start to see some of the areas are now uh, getting a little bit of shading just to emphasize some of the shapes of the, uh, the head. And then we'll add sort of highlighting and, and low lighting in to sort of show some of the bone structure, some more of the bone structure. Okay, well pyrography is a really old art form. Uh, I mean the word itself uh, has Greek roots. It goes back, sort of potentially goes back that far. I don't know the, the real history of it, but pyrography uh, as a word has Greek roots. It's um, pyro meaning fire and graphy meaning writing. So a literal translation of it is fire writing. But I more usually translate it as uh, painting with heat. And this is an electrically heated tool um, of different shapes, like you'd use different paint brushes, for example, or different pencil shapes. And um, it, it scorches, cooks, lots of ways of describing it, but effectively turns turns uh, wooden organic material, dried dried organic material, uh, brown. Uh, in a sort of a sepia tone, um, it's coming across perhaps on the stream a little bit more black than it actually is, but a sepia tone. Um, as you go back in history, it was um, sailors did a lot of um, sort of the ancient, ancient, not not that old. They, I don't know exactly how far back it goes, but um, uh, sailors, the old uh, wood uh, galleons, if you like, sailors used to practice pyrography, usually on ivory, um, with a sail needle and a small spirit burner so that heat uh, the needle and then use that to draw designs onto ivory. Of course ivory is an illegal substance to do anything with these days but um, um, sort of small thin sheets of wood like this are, are more of a modern uh, construct. But uh, pyrography can be applied to wood, leather, paper and cardboard, uh, cotton materials, um, goods are often used to create. Um, uh, goods often are done with with geometric patterns, but it's still pyrography. So different styles as well. Um, this I describe this as photorealism style. <laughs> no way is it photorealistic, but it's photorealism style. Uh, and of course, if you're familiar with that, there's different types of. Um, or different styles. You get the black outline, more illustration style, then you get geometric patterning, uh, and quite a few uh, uh, variations in between. So it's um, it's an art form that's been around for a long time. 
if you uh, want to check out on YouTube, look for an artist on YouTube called Jean Buick, B-U-I-C-K. Um, she's, I'm not sure if she posts under her own name or it's a daughter that posts, but if you do that search, you'll find some really amazing artwork on, on pyrography. And um, if you just do general pyrographic searches, you'll find uh, you'll find a fair amount there. Some of the different styles. You will, you may even find the guy um, on there that does it using a blowtorch. <laughs> I think he sometimes uses an acetylene torch. So he works on great big sheets of wood and creates some interesting artwork. Uh, but yes, I am surprised that. Um, You've not uh, not come across it, especially in uh, in art terms. As a medium, it's um, it's a monochrome medium, um, I guess. Well, it, it's it has some parallels, I guess, with pencil work and airbrush work. Um, some of the ways in which you use the tool are reminiscent of airbrushing. Um, because it has some of the same characteristics. This is a hot tool. Uh, if I just put this down and then start moving, it creates a blob like an airbrush would do if you just turned it on. So there are certain parallels. And you can build up color in, in um, small, uh, in layers almost. And again, yeah, it has some parallels. But there we go. Maybe you'll have to ask them about it now. Okay, I'm 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 kind of guessing, you know, because, uh, and I am guessing it. And as you mentioned, there, an illustration student, this probably isn't really something that you do an illustration in. Well, I suppose it would work. Um, it would work for like the old woodcut style illustration style. Um, to create that sort of uh, image. But generally speaking, it's relatively slow compared with um, working with pencils or uh, electronics. So uh, I kind of uh, kind of understand it, but um, this is more, I guess, more general art than than um, illustration or commercial illustration work. Fluffy, 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 <laughs> fluffy, fluffy twiglet. Sorry, it's quite a difficult one to say. Uh, but Fluffy Twiggle, thank you very much for the follow. Um, I do appreciate you doing that and everybody else that does as well. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing these days that, that colleges tend to tend to keep with, you know, unless you're doing something gen a general um, uh, study, then in, in art, then they're going to be looking at more commercial type of, uh, of work. And uh, this, as I say, takes quite a while. What you're looking at here is, OK, I'm not fast and I am not working whilst I'm talking. But the um, there's been something like about 20 hours of stream time since we started this. So it, it's um, it's a fair bit. Irish Lurker. Uh, good evening, welcome back, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, what? Okay, I'm gonna buy. What? What? What makes this the stream your um, uh, your favourite uh, Irish lurker? In, um, kind of interested to know. And in the meantime, I'll actually do some more of what I'm supposed to be streaming. I am looking at reference pictures, by the way, if you keep seeing me look off to one side. I've got a couple of printed, uh, well, I've got a few printed sheets, but I showed it on stream a bit earlier. But um, this is one of them that I've got out, printed out, for example, elephants. Some of the grass, as you can see, grassland and uh, and, and the, the deep sunset uh, pictures. 
just to help me get an idea of how things should look like and, and represent them here on the uh, on the image. Thank you, Fluffy Twiggler. That, in some ways, you know, your um, your name strikes me as having uh, a reason behind it, uh, Fluffy Twiggler. Um, I'm just curious. Is there some sort of story behind that? Um, Twiglet has two meanings to me. Uh, Twiglet as in a small twig or Twiglet as in a, a, a food snack. Uh, which I quite like, um, and Fluffy Twiglet strikes me as one that's... I don't mean it this way, it's, it's sort of one that you found in a pocket that's covered in fluff. <laughs> but I'm not quite sure that's more what you intend it to mean, but uh, uh, I think you know, there's quite often interesting stories behind people's names. Kind of curved. I'm going to this area just over the eyebrow is at the moment it's uncolored, it's rather bright and light. I'm going to color it, but before I do that, I'm going to make this area a little bit darker so that when I color that, I don't lose the out sort of outlined shapes. You can do this sort of thing, as I mentioned um, Fluffy Twiglet, you can do this on things like card and paper just as a matter of interest, just while I recall. I've got some. I've got here a piece of uh, fairly thick heavyweight paper, so you can, um, uh, you, you, you can do um, things just on paper, thick paper, so you can uh, I know. I can I can never draw things when I just um, I, I just make random things, but uh, Uh, you know, just a random sort of semi drawing, but it can be fairly fast as well. But it does indeed, you're right there, uh, sir. Night watch, it is, uh, it is, uh, yeah, it is a paper, it is a wood product, of course, but it um, actually doesn't necessarily have to be. You can do it on um, like papyrus uh, and reed style paper, um, so it doesn't actually have to be wood fibre. Um, it, it kind of any you know you could do it on straw for example it, it's kind of any dried out uh, medium will do it uh, organic medium like that with with f uh, fiber based uh, stuff um, uh -huh. okay <laughs> pet names yeah <laughs> I understand um, Okay, names do stick. That's kind of my mine as uh, stuck. Um, the 
art, obviously. Uh, but the Zaragon comes from uh, an album title by John Miles, who is a uh, personal friend of, at the time was a personal friend of my wife, and I, I know him now. Um, but it's it was one of her favourite albums, so I, the name just kind of stuck again. And now it's it's almost um, so I, I kind of almost use it more than my own name. But uh, yeah, interesting. I, I, almost always a fascinating behind some of them. I mean, some some of them are just it just sounded good, but sometimes there are. Uh, um, not really. Uh, I mean, here's an illustration. This is kitchen paper. Um, so. It's not exactly tissue paper, and I'll, I'll dig up. I've got another piece of paper in front of me in a minute, but um, okay, it went black. It went brown because this this has been in the air for a while. But I can I can do it on on paper that's this thin. Of course, I can just hold it there, and it'll go really dark. I've got. Let me get. I've got a piece of. Um, No, that's a that's an invoice. I don't want to do it with that. Okay, tell you what, I have got a piece of paper. Excuse the camera going all over the place. I shall straighten things up in a minute. Pull that back. Okay, so this was just a, another reference image. So this is this is lightweight um, photocopy paper. Just cool that down a little bit and I'm touching this paper actually I'm just going to put something underneath it because I don't want it what will happen if I'm not careful is it um, this is so thin that I'll actually start colouring the wood underneath but I'm touching the paper here and as you can see I'm not making much of a colour so I'm going to slow down Now, I do have to be a bit more careful with this because it is so, so thin and this tool has some hot spots uh, which will add colour sometimes where I don't want it to. As you can see it's a really light brown. Now I'm going to see if I can get darker. I'm not that skilled at doing this on paper. Uh, and I can turn the tool down a little bit more in terms of heat if I need to do so. Um, and I, ha I haven't got sufficient skill to create a great deal of um, a range of, of tones on paper. So I'm not particularly practiced at doing this. So, I mean, you've got a heck of a level of, you know, you do have a level of control. So this is, this is hot enough to work on wood, so I can, I can always turn it down so it makes it easier. But I can also, as you um, understand, I can very quickly burn through a lot of smoke. I won't get, I'm unlikely to get any flame, but there is a narrow hole through there. It's really very easy to do. In fact it, it actually makes it quite challenging to get dark colours um, on paper because you do char all the way through. Mm. Now that the smell of overheated paper. <laughs> a 
luckily I don't mind it too much. <laughs> Oh, by the way, if you see me blowing on the tip, I am blowing on it to cool it down. If I hold it as I'm talking like this in the air, um, the tip heats up. Uh, and of course, when it's in contact with the wood, the wood's conducting heat away. So it's, it's cooler than it is when it's not in contact with the wood. So it heats up. And if I am not careful when I put it down on the wood, I, if, I, if I don't put it down m moving... It will create a dark blob um, at the point where I touch it down. So either I have to land it like a plane and keep moving in order to dissipate that heat over a fairly wide area, or I have to cool it down before I touch it down on the wood. And sometimes it's easy just to blow on it, and then and then I can touch it down on the wood, and it doesn't heat up as much because the wood is conducting the heat away. So I've got better control of the cooling. Cat hairs. If you've ever burnt hair, you know the smell that I can smell at the moment. We shall go away shortly, but we we have cats, and those who are regular to the stream will have uh, possibly seen at least one of them before. Um, but the hair, the shed hair and uh, occasionally get small ones landing on the on the work just out of you know out of the atmosphere but when the tool catches uh, catches one and i've got some on the end of this uh, it carbonizes it and it smells somewhat it's one reason why i would not particularly want to work on bone i understand it smells terrible Interesting artwork, but smells terrible. Mind you, I do I do have a solvent mask uh, for uh, for airbrushing. Although I need a new one, so I could always wear that. That gets rid of most smells, but um, I don't think I'd like the lingering smell in the studio. Now I'm not looking for I'm not looking for sharp edges on this, just sort of a rough edge. Uh, I'm going to effectively blend some of the uh, some of the colours together. So I don't really want a sharp a sharp edge. I just want a gradual uh, difference in colour. So we get uh, a kind of makes your eye think of curves and things like that yeah that if you saw that you know you see that I'll just show you little tiny dark mark i just made there when i touched the pen down that is exactly the sort of thing that is, you kind of have to learn to avoid and that is because the tool heated up uh, before i touched it down so um it, it, it can actually happen that quickly. Now I'm going to leave a little bit, which is almost. I say white, but uncoloured wood there because, again, we we got sunlight straight at his face. 
it's sort of a highlight so we're gonna we're gonna leave it there for the moment may turn it down a little bit later once we we get closer towards the end just because it will look too bright So that's sort of Let's take this. The, f the whole forehead is too bright. I think it's perhaps throwing me off a little bit. So I'm just going to turn it down a bit. I'm using curved strokes to do this. Then, if I get any um, slightly darker marks, they'll be in the correct plane. It will look like skin wrinkles. So I'm helping myself in case I make an accidental mark that I don't want. Here's one of the things with this um, fluffy twiggler is that it can be challenging to work with because it's um, not fantastically easy to erase mistakes. You can hide them more easily than you can you can erase them. Uh, you can't take you know with a pencil. You can obviously take a, a an eraser to it with this if you you can do some work by scraping or by sanding but you then change the surface texture that when you put more pyrography over the top it can sometimes still be seen uh, as a fixed patch and it can be really hard to uh, to overcome that so it's the sort of thing that you try and avoid if you can or generally speaking if you make a mistake, which and the mistake is often a mark where you don't want it, then what you will do is hide that by taking the tones around that area uh, darker so that it disappears. And that sometimes means you end up adjusting tones over quite a large area of uh, the piece of work. I'm kind of, kind of lucky in this particular, the choice of this particular piece being a... Um, almost sundown African savannah type uh, image um, in that you've got a lot of texture in it and therefore you know odd marks that I've made because I'm still uh, learning a lot about how to use tools and things like that um, actually add to that sort of texture and atmosphere so um, judicial use uh, or judicial selection of the scene has helped quite enormously. Um, yeah, but if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. Well, no, that's not strictly true, I suppose. But mistakes and how you deal with them help you learn an enormous amount. So, you know, don't, well, I say, it and I'm doing it myself, you know, I'm not worried about making mistakes. Ultimately, I've lost a few hours. Kind of big deal. I'm not, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, it, it's not a commercial piece of art. So, um, from that perspective, sorry, I'm not, well, what I mean is I'm not trying to live off, off 
commercial art. So if it's uh, if I have to do it again, well, I've practiced. Um, what will I do with this image, Night Watch? Um, that's a good question. I'm I, I may hang it. Uh, I have a tendency though to lose in once I've done something to lose interest in it. So it may go in it may go in the portfolio. Um I'm not sure. I may hang it for a while. Because uh, you can only hang so much. <laughs> so um not uh, not quite sure. Sometimes you have to rotate these things or um ultimately even dispose of them in some way. Uh just Jessup, haven't you seen me do pyrography before? I thought you might have done. I've done two other pieces, so I'm kind of surprised. Uh, ball, ball shog, or balls hog. Um, it is wood. <laughs> um, this is this is birch plywood. It's a manufactured uh, construct, but it's it's natural wood, uh, just very thin sheets um, glued together which is actually quite good for doing pyrography on because it helps stabilize the wood and stops it warping uh, as a, th uh, a thin sheet of solid wood would do uh, with this amount of pyrography on it try spinning piece of sandpaper tiny spinning piece of sandpaper um <laughs> there, there are you you can use sandpaper you can use a scalpel for example uh yeah just a common common scalpel you can scrape and you can scrape this surface away because the colouring is literally on the surface which is why the grass at the bottom here which is, which you literally is just um, scrape I won't do it again but it's scraped with a scalpel scalpel point so the the colour is taken off but I mean I can run my f okay I scraped deep so I can feel the texture there but it's really hard. Let me uh, see if I've got another piece. Is it this one? Oh, maybe not. Might be this one. Yeah, it is this one. Okay. Um, if you look at that, can you see that mark at the left hand side just by my thumb? that uh, and, and i can see it because it continues right off the end here but um you possibly can't see it as well but i can quite clearly see it in the um in the pyrography that was just a piece of sticky tape that was on this wood it was it was it's not sticky it is literally the surface the very top surface when the sticky tape was taken off uh before the pyrography was applied uh, and it was just like masking tape. It wasn't any really heavy duty tape. But that, uh, that as you can see, has disrupted the surface. And when I look at it here, the um, I, I sort of can see the lines uh, continuing across the pyrography. Of course, it is highly dependent, as you can see, on the angle. But you only need a, you know, if this was on the wall, you only need a little bit of sunlight or a lamp in the wrong direction. And it stands out quite clearly. As you can see there, so um, sandpaper, whether it's done by hand or with a spinning piece, um, can have the same effect of just disrupting the surface fibres. And um, even something like uh, isopropyl alcohol, which potentially would uh, act as a solvent on this material that's on the top, would do the same thing. It would tend to soak into the wood a little bit and raise the fibres uh, so I haven't experimented a great deal with it with erasing because of that um, but um, uh, you know it's it's something I might uh, one of these days I might actually have a go at I tend to, I tend to prefer the uh, not make the mistake or make it part of the artwork uh, as Bob Ross used to say the happy accident um, and uh, and deal with it that way so learning not to have them visible and it's sometimes just as simple as turning the temperature down don't work too fast um, and things like that um, but uh, 
The other thing about a spinning piece of sandpaper, you're probably talking about a machine driven. And when you machine drive something like that, you'd be surprised how deep you get really quickly. And then you've got a you've got a divot, <laughs> which then becomes even more visible. So something like that, uh, you'd probably want to use by hand rather than machine driven, just so that you've got ultimately very fine control over it. Um, He'll give it to you. Um, it, well, maybe one day I might give it away. Um, I could exchange it for um, UK currency. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's, uh, I don't know. Hadn't I hadn't particularly thought about uh, disposing of it, having not yet completely um, created it. But uh, um, there might be a possibility in the future, give it away to somebody. But we shall see. Not just yet. And also flat making it easier. I'm not quite sure I followed that comment uh, just yet, but I think we we're talking about erasing it. But um, not sure. Um, uh, Boss Hog, the kind of the answer is to, to that is yes. This one, um, I've got some reference pictures that I was, so elephants, grass, um, background images, um, let's have a look. Sorry, let me just put that tool down before I burn something with it that I don't want to. So there's, there's the giraffe that you saw there, trees in the background, um, sort of elephants um, and uh, and what have you. So sort of working, not, not so there isn't a specific photograph of that, although I have been known in the past to uh, work from photographs. So um, the cat, for example, is well, was a photograph. So it was a re reproduction of a photograph. Um, but um, this has kind of been made up, the colouring, other than you know, looking at references that help me see the shapes involved, like the, the skull shape. I kind of am making it up as I go along. Um, so it's kind of a mix of both. But um, I can do it, I can either do it. I, I am not fantastically good at imagining and then drawing a scene. Um, I'm better working from references, so I've got some idea what an elephant looks like. Uh, but I can uh, I can do it sort of either way. Oh, talking about the plywood, yeah, yeah. So it's it's nice. It actually it also is cheap. <laughs> Just as it sounds, plywood is cheaper than solid wood. Um, generally speaking, because the car isn't uh, birch or it's not as not as good quality. As the surface plywood is, plywood is often measured in four. Well, uh, there's a couple of schemes of ways of doing it, but they they often um, grade it A through D. So A is is perfectly. There's not there's perfect. There's no knots, nicks, joins in the surface of the wood. Uh, e uh, so D and I might even go to E. You know there will be visible joins. There'll be uh, bits potentially missing or knots. And things like that um, but it only applies to the surface what's in the car anybody's guess it doesn't actually even have to be uh, birch it could be another wood like pine or something like that um, but the car, the car is it's almost like a veneer really but it's thicker uh, so the car is the car stabilizes the the plywood and, and then uh, the surface is whatever you uh, want it to be and this is interior grade plywood. Um, don't don't recall what plywood normally is made of, uh, but exterior grade plywood is is or building grade plywood is not generally as as good quality uh, as this. Um, theme hospital. Good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. I'd better get on with some more pyrography.
Yeah, something cheap really. It's um, it depends what it's what the plywood the use of the plywood is intended for. Um, if it's for decoration purposes, then the the core will, as you say, be a um, a softwood, which is generally cheaper. Um, but if it's um, if it's for construction purposes, it it doesn't really matter a great deal. It it's um it will depend on just what the uh, the plywood is rated for so if it's meant to be used like for flooring or something like that it's got to withstand a certain load so they'll build the core out of wood that will take that load um, and they'll put extra layers in obviously it gets thicker there's more layers but they also the way they construct the layers in the core uh, matters as well um, and that that adds to the quality of it because Kind of the worst quality is they put one layer and then one at 90 degrees. The better quality plywood cores, they, they rotate through 60 or 30 degrees as they build the core up. So, But that doesn't really make a lot of difference like this. When you've only got a single, uh, a single or a three layer board, so the core is just a single layer, it's at right angles. It's not, uh, not, not important in that respect. Uh, it it you know in the terms of resisting the the warping from the uh, from the shrinkage that pyrography uh, does to the surface, then you know the fact the fact that it's at an angle helps enormously. Um, Theokadoka, thank you very much. Pyrography, you've never seen pyrography. Well, um, I hope it's uh, I hope it's proving interesting. You'd like to try doing this to dead wood on bonsai. You probably would need to remove the bark from it um, and let it dry, air dry for a little while. But yes, there's no reason why you can't do that. Um, depending obviously on the bonsai itself, then you've got different colours of wood. But yeah, you could do that. There's, I mean, I'm doing this on flat wood. There's no reason why, for example, it couldn't be done on a twig. In fact, there's quite a few people will use driftwood, uh, which has been sort of salt dried, if you like, in the sea and, and the sun. Um, they um, that works quite nicely in, in terms of colour, because salt dried driftwood tends to be very white. Obviously, it's absorbed a lot of salt. Uh, and the other thing with um, I guess with your bonsai is um, it will it needs to dry out because if there's a lot of sap in there, uh, Glen Goyne. Thank you very much for following. I do appreciate you and everybody that does that. Thank you very much. Uh, and if there is anybody else that's watching which would care to follow, um, I would appreciate that. If you don't want to, that's OK. Uh, yeah, in terms of the bonsai, um, if there's a lot of sap um, still within the wood itself, the heat does tend to um, make it bubble out to the surface. So if there's a lot in the core, it will tend to bubble out. and um, it, the the sap itself will go brown as well, uh, that you know the real core sap, um, but it it becomes very sticky as well on the surface, which can be quite hard to control. But other than that, yeah, no reason why not. Yep, you're right, just Jessup. Um, it generally is an odd number of. of uh, uh, cause that way well it's part of the stabilization technique but uh, you uh, know more about it than I do uh, Glenn Goyne thank you very much for that that's kind of you to say so yes <laughs> Theodoka it's both um, it literally the well the 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 color comes from the quantity of heat that's been applied in total and now that can either be done through holding the tool down for a long time in one place or generally speaking you'll move it slowly rather than holding it in one place but just as, as an illustration either holding it for a long time in one place or holding it releasing it holding it releasing it holding it releasing it and so on so you apply it's not layering it, but it's kind of like uh, you know, applying layers of colour on top of each other. But in actual fact, you're just making the one layer darker, but you're doing it in, in steps. Or the other way is 
to hold it in place, not for very long, but have the heat turned higher. So it's literally the, the quantity of heat that's been applied over time that does it. Uh, and you, you quite often, when you're doing this, will use all three different methods uh, to do that. For example, up here I'm working with the heat turned down and I'm doing multiple layers, so I get really small colour changes. Um, when I was working these darker areas, um, I was moving really slowly. So generally speaking, a good idea to keep the tool moving. Um, otherwise you create like a brand type stamp. But he really slowly moving it and turning the heat up so that I didn't have to move it too slowly. Um, so it, it's generally speaking, you'll work with a combination and you'll be, when you're working with this tool set that I've got here, I'm, you know, will change the heat from time to time. Also, depending on the tool that I work with, um, this tool, I have to turn, um, don't turn the heat up. What I do is turn the flow of electricity up to the tip, which creates more heat, because uh, it's not temperature controlled. Um, but I can work with another tip, for example, like this one, which is more like a pencil, uh, but I have to turn this one way down because this heats up more than that does. So all sorts of variations to uh, to get through. Um, just Jessup Blaine product. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I learned because I was trying to get hold of very light wood. Um, so I had to, you know, it took me a while to work out and understand that, uh, you know, why plywood, what sort of plywood. Um, I, have, I do sometimes work with solid wood as well, especially the thicker pieces. So... And I've got some around to try. Um, can't find any now, but I've got um, I've got something like some uh, some fairly thick, a third half inch leaf shapes, for example. And I want to do some stuff on at some point. Uh, I've got some little tiny buttons. Uh, they're about an inch, like a mushroom top, uh, around here. That you get some nice little tiny images on. Um, so um, it takes a while to understand some of that. Um, okay, Theodoka, no problem. If anybody has any questions, I don't mind answering um, uh, questions about this. It's uh, that's part of the reason why I stream is so I can answer people's questions and demonstrate what I do and. And just generally have fun doing it. It's you know streaming to you guys, explaining it. Explaining it does tend to mean I stop work. It um I have a tendency not to want to work too much with a hot tool whilst I'm not watching what I'm doing. And I um I prefer to look at you whilst I'm talking to you. <laughs> it kind of feels more natural to me to do that than to be looking at you. It's, makes me feel like I'm ignoring you if I'm looking down and talking at the same time. But I see you work now. Yeah, you might just do that, uh, just Jessup. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's have a go at doing some of it. So, um, this forehead here is still really bright. Yeah, it's standing out. Um, it, there would be some highlight even with a, a low level sun, but that's that's kind of like there's a flash gun gone off over the head or if it was it was um, a really bright high sun then we get that sort of whitey sort of effect um but but that's kind of ignoring the fact that the elephant skin is gray anyway which i kind of am ignoring it uh but we still wouldn't have it this uh, this white so i'm now going to apply some more color over the top of here Again, being careful when I put this down to keep this moving to start with so that I didn't actually create uh, a dark blob. And as it's cooled down now, I can slow down a little bit and, and start to, by slowing down, as I mentioned earlier, we get colour start to appear. And I can control that by, by the speed at which I'm moving and by going over an area again. But by starting fast, I don't get surprised by the colour suddenly appearing 
uh, too dark. If I go fast, I can slow down. If I start too slow, too slow, it's too late to speed up. So, some of the colour changes may be a little bit subtle to you on the stream. You might see them, but I am consciously trying to be quite conservative in colouring this. I'm not quite sure how dark I want it to go. So by being quite conservative, I can, I can go over it again. As I mentioned earlier, I can't take it away if, if I've done too much. So it's starting to tone down a bit. This area just around here looks better. That's still a bit bright. Uh, evening, AD Fall Guy. Welcome to the studio this evening. Nice to see you again. I saw you doing your um, photographic touch-ups this afternoon. Baby steps. Yep, that's right, uh, Fluffy Twiglet. I guess with more experience, and, and I've only ever used, this is a brand new tip on this tool to me. I've never used th this tip or this this particular shape of tip before. I've only done it for about half of this, used it for about half of this work. So again, I'm not, I'm still learning how to use the tip properly, what temperatures it likes to work at. So you know, with practice, I can work faster, but no particular need to do so. Uh, okay. It's turning down quite nicely now. Now I don't want to I don't want to lose this slightly darker area here which is a slightly concaved area and I'm just toning that down as well I want, I want it I want to be a fairly smooth blend when I finished um, so you don't see exactly see an edge uh, an edge to it but you sort of see a, a rough shape <laughs> if I'm not careful, I start sticking my tongue out. Concentration, yes. <laughs> um. Um, I, uh, to be honest, Eddie, I was I was half watching because I was at work as usual. Um, 
I found it interesting to to see how people uh, see things. Um, I would say be a little. I mean, so I found it interesting. Yes, uh, to watch. Um, I, as obviously, I wasn't talking because I was at work, and it's uh, it's kind of a little bit aw awkward to with the iPad to talk uh, to chat anyway, because sometimes it doesn't connect, and then I have to connect up on uh, another machine to be able to chat on things. Uh, one thing I did uh, notice: you do seem to want to be careful because. It does look a bit like you're um, overexposing some of them when you when you, um, you you're adjusting the brightness, so uh, they tend to blow out a little bit. So just be a bit. I just suggest you being a bit careful with that. Good concentration, Theodoka. Okay, thank you very much. Well, um, that's kind of you uh, to drop in. Um, I'm I do tweet when I go live, so if you want to follow me on Twitter or on. Um, uh, of course, on uh, Twitch, then you'll get notifications. But uh, generally speaking, about 8 p.m. UK time every night, I'll be around. Um, it is basically like using a pencil. I'm not say I wouldn't say it's particularly more delicate. Uh, you can get you know you've got a lot better control with a pencil. This is the, your pencil applies color directly. This is kind of an indirect thing. It's it's heat, and there's there's so many variables involved as as I mentioned, time, temperature, um, well time and temperature really, um, speed sort of is a variation on time. Uh, so um, you know it's this is it's it's a it's not quite as delicate as a pencil, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, well, I, I had um, a generation. It's a generation one iPad that I've got, and quite a lot of time it just won't connect to chat. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, fluffy Twiggler, art. Am I an art teacher? Well, I'm teaching art now, but no, and that's not uh, that's not my job. <laughs> and I think if it was, I probably wouldn't be watching. St I either wouldn't be watching streams, or the whole class would be watching the stream. Um, maybe that's a useful thing for Twitch to consider. I don't know, or for for art teachers to consider. Um, a, a lot of um, a lot of free examples of that going on almost in, in, in different techniques and styles. Um, now I work for a telecommunications firm and I work generally speaking with lots of numbers uh, and trend analysis and that sort of thing. So this is a completely a completely different uh, thing for me. But, uh, I, I, mm, Although having said which, my I consider my job to be creative as well, because you you problem solving, coming up with solutions to things, um, you know, coming up with analyses and graphs and things like that, which is kind of a creative act. So, but I'm kind of I've kind of always been creative. So this is more of a, well, this is a hobby, but. Um, uh, I, I for work I've done things like programming and um, uh, stuff, um, building user interfaces, things like that, which, is, which I consider also to be an art form and and and, and uh, creative. So and hobby wise, um, I uh, you know electronic design. I've built models flown remote control models and uh, cars and things like that so it uh, it stretches over quite a few things and um, I have been a lecturer at work teaching um, uh, computer maintenance stuff so <laughs> uh, some of that skill I guess is uh, is bleeding over into this sort of work as well right. That tone is coming down. I've still got a bit too much highlights in a few places. Like over the top here. Now, 
a little bit careful. I don't want, and there's, there's an edge there which I don't fantastically want to lose. Um, I may just I may just apply. A, this is one of the things with pyrography, with it being a monochrome artwork. You and without having edges, without having a defined edge like a black line. Uh, some areas like here at the top, I'm going to be very careful. Uh, if I either have to um, point out to your eye that there's a line going across there, which I probably do quite successfully with the way the trunk comes up and is, is outlined by the shadow of the ear, that you see that line even if it actually wasn't visible. Um, or I actually have to make it a little bit more um, contrast just perhaps by just darkening across that edge there just a touch like, like that for example which makes it stand out just a little bit more because if, they, if the two tones match each other perfectly then there is no line um, and then you're relying on that uh, optical illusion that your eye tends to want to follow a line that it's that it's it's um, it's been following up. It'll tend to want to follow it. Find, uh, finding the balance is yeah, it is. Um, what I well, I can always have a look, but um, the one where you I, I noticed it imme you do it immediately. You then turn down again afterwards. So. Uh, I think you, I think you turn the saturation up a little bit more, which of course will compensate for the fact uh, the overexposure. So it's um, it's kind of a difficult balancing act. Um, is is that you uh, overexposure? Of course, well, you you familiar overexposure loses you the details sometimes, but it can what it can do is um, I, I noticed it. Um, it 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 tends to highlight shadows like if a, if a ring isn't quite joined properly and things like that so oh good well uh, your permanent marker yeah uh, that's well it, it's it's worth <laughs> it's worth testing <laughs> uh dear, it's worth testing it would be annoying if it if it, it had uh, um if it had, if it had done anything like that, I'm trying to think. There was one there was one marker pen that used like a plastic um, tip, but the plastic tip uh, had silicon in it, and if you ever try putting uh, paint over silicon, uh, it's not a good idea. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Fluffy Twiglet. I've had no formal training whatsoever, um, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it's odd the area there still showing up rather bright even uh, certainly it's on the stream it's showing up rather bright. Uh, okay, the lighting angles are different, but um, still showing up rather bright to me at the moment. Is that? Let's see if I can tone the edges down a bit.
Yeah, no, that's a good way of uh, a good way of doing it, um, Eddie. You can also mask it if you uh, really want, you know, if you if you wanted to make sure you, uh, if you wanted to do it with paint, you could you could mask it with you know use masking masking tape or um, like paint well painters tape generally it's called um, without getting into the expensive stuff. I mean, it's a fairly, it's a fairly, yeah. I was going to say it's a fairly sizable uh, piece you're working on, isn't it? In case you're not aware of the the trick, by the way, a lot of people talk about masking. Um, or for anybody else that's watching, because Eddie's doing a fairly large sign. It's a few feet in either direction, I believe, isn't it, Eddie? Uh, for his scouting, um, a lot of people when you think when they think about masking will think about covering a whole area in with when you're airbrushing generally speaking you only need to cover the area where you're going to spray and a little bit over the side for air for, for over spray um, or you put tape down along an edge like i might do along the edge here for example if i wanted to do the trunk put uh, an edge tape down the edge and um, i may even cut 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 the shape with a um, with a knife after I've laid the tape down. But what I'd then, you know, like to cover this area up, I wouldn't start putting loads of tape down. I'd put a sheet of paper over it and then just tape the paper to the existing tape. It's a quick way of a quick way of masking things without going into uh, really expensive stuff. And masking, masking tape isn't fantastically good because it, it has a lot of ridges in it and paint tends to seep under them but one trip for any tick trip tick i'll start again and say tip is something like well I'm, I, I use the back of a scalpel uh, when i do it with masking tape but um because it's nice and round but anything nice and round like that you can just go right along the edge press reasonably firmly and you flatten the tape now you still will get some paint seepage under and there are tricks like uh, using clear um, clear medium uh, when you're spraying because a clear medium even if it soaks underneath won't be visible but then that seals the edge of the tape the only thing you've got to be a little bit careful of then is when you lift the tape that you don't drag paint with it and you do that by making sure that you uh, drag the tape away from the edge so you don't lift it straight up you always bend it back on itself and pull it away from the edge and that tends to break the seal if it if you if it looks like it's going to start and come up take a sharp knife and just go around the edge which breaks the seal as well yeah you see you get to learn all sorts on here not just pyrography or uh, scraper board or anything else <laughs> yeah. One of these days, I'll I will actually do some uh, airbrushing, but unfortunately, it'll be a while before I have the room to be able to do it on stream. Mind you, my airbrushing is about as good as my pyrography is. Kriya, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Now, this is where it gets a little bit awkward. I've got two dark marks there, which I'm okay, happy with. I want to get in just in between them. And they're there because of the width of the tool. The edges tend to be hotter than the centre. So if I go in, if I'm not careful, if I go in at certain angles, I just reinforce that, that darkness. So this is one reason why for here, for example, I'm turning the tool on its side a little bit. 
so that I'm only working with just one edge. Now I'll get a bit of a texturing going on because of that, but um, it's an elephant skin, you know. The other way I could have dealt with it is by using the tip. Uh, so I, I, I rock this more onto the toe and then come in sort of from this angle to just fill it in. That way I get a smoother a smoother area. But, you know, as I say, this is the elephant skin. So, you know, I'm quite happy to get sort of thing. No problem, Gray. There's no, well, from my point of view, no hurry. If you, uh, anytime. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so much to choose from. <coughs> One of the things I'm thinking now that I've had applied a little bit of colour to this is that this edge here is looking so white, literally because of the darkness behind it. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just apply a little bit of colour, a little bit of more darkness, if you wish to call it that way, just against this edge. there so we start to separate separate it or, or turn it down a little bit just on the one edge and that actually is it's changing things a little bit I think probably uh, it's, it's down here it, it's adjusted it quite a bit um, I need to do a bit more in this sort of area here and then just uh, just to make sure I don't create a line so and then we'll see But with pyrography, sometimes it, you know what the two two colours next to each other um, can completely uh, fool you, um, in or fool me, shall we say, in in the perception that it gives of of how bright something is or how dark it is. Uh, yep, fine line green. Yeah, the fine line tapes uh, are quite uh, make things quite a lot easier to use because you can stretch them a little bit as well. Great for doing curves, which I'm sure you've found. Um, one other thing, well, one other thing you can do, Eddie. Really, sorry to uh, um, uh, hijack the stream a little bit. Let's see if I've got one here. Uh, What I was looking for under there is 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 I've got a mylar um, mylar uh, I call it well it's called a shield, but it's 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 um it, it's a piece of fairly rigid plastic, um, which is which is which is curved. Well, it's got all sorts of curves and it. it's got some straight edges curves and and things in it. What you can do, Ad, with them, is is um, because of the you know, the curves, if you like. What you can do is is just use it and just spray small areas and, and move your shield with you as you spray areas, and you spray off spray off here into the area. So you so you'll get a sharp edge from the shield um, as as you go around. Or if I was doing like a horizon, for example, obviously it's a bit easier like this and you can use a piece of paper and just spray off it 
now you'd have to spray lightly if it's a if it's a thin line and you'd have to get quite close but you'll get a sharp edge that side and then of course you just flip it and do it do it the other way it takes a little bit of skill if you're doing small small lines um, and sort of another trick it's easier with mylar because it's it's in it's see-through but you can cut a slot <laughs> in the mylar or, or in paper uh, and just put it over and uh, mylar because you can see where you're going and then you can just spray through the slot um, so you can do that as well yeah Okay, yeah. I should go back to pyrography. Um, yeah, so that's made a... Actually, that's not bad. Because that's not bad. I am looking at uh, I'm from here I'm looking at this and and you can see now just gently that dark edge there but in actual fact that actually looks quite good and I'm going to darken that a little bit because you can see the shadow here of the trunk um, which needs to extend down a little bit but the sunlight is virtually horizontal and when you look at where the trunk is that shadow ought to go up there um, so I'm actually going to extend that a little bit. I'm not going to make it really dark. I don't think I need it. I, I think it, yeah, it's um, it just needs to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more dark. But it, it doesn't look inaccurate. It doesn't look to be wrong. And now doing that, this colour has, has changed to me. Uh, it, it's looking more like a highlight without being too bright, especially if I tip it, tip it that way. It, it needs a little bit more toned down, but not much. But it's now looking more like a highlight, as like you get just off the edge of, of the sun coming past past the trunk onto that to create that shadow. Um, and of course what you've got is you've got the edge of the trunk it sort of curves just around here to come over the side of the uh, side of the head really so this is kind of the the forehead uh, and then it goes around the side to the temples around here so you're almost in that highlight area there anyway so that actually looks quite good um, I think that shadow I need to just taper off a little bit it's a bit sudden fear reaper seven good evening welcome to the studio welcome back i've not seen you for a while how have you been i'm going to taper this shadow off a little bit the the trunks to me looks to be off instead of being straight up in front of his nose he's tipped it over to one side slightly um, and of course that's that's kind of the way the um the very tip of the trunk has gone it, it's it's almost as though it's just tucked behind this edge so the shadow isn't quite dead straight so it's not this is, that's why it doesn't go right up the center of his um, his forehead Okay, that looks better. That looks better. That needs to be a bit darker. Nearly always, whenever you've got a pyrograph... Okay, for this technique, uh, keep the tool moving whenever you've got it on the wood. There are other techniques where you want to keep it still, but um, 
That looks okay. Yes. Uh, I see it's, it has been it's, obviously my memory is terrible it seems like a, an awfully long time Fear Reaper is it extremely hot there as well um, for me up in Yorkshire um, the day uh, today has been sort of mixed it's been quite sunny reasonably hot but sort of only in the early 20s 23 degrees uh, the day before Yesterday it was really cool. We were sort of 19, 18 degrees um, around where I am. Obviously the day before that there was 30 plus. Even with an air conditioner in going behind me, um, I couldn't get this room down below 27. So, uh, But today, not so bad. It's sort of, well we've got 24 degrees in the studio at the moment. Um, I've, I've got one window shut so I've got no through draft otherwise it would be a lot cooler but it's um, I then have to uh, leave a curtain open which I get sort of odd light coming in and things 30, 38 to 40 ok um, I believe you may have mentioned roughly where you uh, uh, are and I don't recommend any more detail than that Fear Reaper, but I can't remember. Um, 38 to 40 inside the house. Yeah. We were lucky on that really hot day. We had at least some breeze where Netherlands. Okay. You have mentioned that before. I apologise. My memory is not great. Um, I, remember, I remember visual images more than I remember uh, text. Um, we've, we, we had... I think we had some like thirty, well over thirty in the house, but it, we did have a full uh, f uh, a breeze, so it, the house itself didn't heat up. It was literally, well, it was air temperature, shall we say, coming through, uh, which wasn't too bad. And then uh, made it a bit awkward sleeping. It was rather warm to sleep, but that's um, just a well a fan sort of helped with that really but it stayed that that was uncomfortable for us uh, UK people a nice cold bath and stayed there I don't think I could do that I can't I find going in the sea too cold and that's in a, in hot countries so a nice cold bath Blah. mind you I'm, I'm well I, sus I suppose if you stay in a nice cold bath for long enough then it does cool you down but generally, generally speaking, <laughs> aren't warm baths or warm showers supposed to cool you down more afterwards? Because you then um, it opens all the pores and you lose you lose heat from your your skin a lot quicker. Hmm. Okay, I think that looks not bad. At least for the moment. That edge of that shadow is, this edge is fine. This one's a bit too, too sharp without a reason for it. I'm not putting a lot of the elephant skin texture in. The reason why um, I, I've kind of 
protecting that from reference but it's like that because of the skin texture um, so what I'm going to do is ignore that and let's soften that off because I'm not putting the skin and the, the, the skin texture the folds of the skin in then what you're looking at down here is caused by by the skin texture so because I'm not putting it in I'm going to lose what I'm going to do is lose that edge what a what a ah, that's riff that's catching the light a lot I want this reasonably sharp because it is uh, being cast a shadow being cast by the trunk so that's a believable shadow just across there so I'm leaving that in place this actually is part of the bone structure around the eye so I think what I'm going to do is curve that round a little bit more what I'm going to do is try and move that light a little bit just off there so we don't get as much glare off of it Is it true that you drink a lot? Me personally, or uh, English people? There are some English people that don't drink tea. It's it's a um, it's one of those uh, stereotypes. Yeah, there's quite a lot of tea drunk. Um, there's quite a lot of coffee drunk as well. There's some people I know that don't drink tea at all, and some people I know don't drink coffee. So, um, I personally drink coffee until six o'clock and after six o'clock I drink tea. I think um, a lot of people fi find teas more refreshing though for something you know, with it being an infusion it tends to be a little bit more uh, refreshing. Uh, 160 tea bags a month. Uh, is that? But that's for your family, isn't it, uh, Eddie Folgai? And uh, and if you think that a uh, slight exaggeration, but you kind of use one tea bag per drink, then 160 is not that many. <laughs> you can't drink coffee. In is that is that it has some adverse effects on you or you just don't like the taste because co coffee certainly i think um is an acquired taste as in quite a few other things as well um but you know I, i'd like a good coffee oh just for you well even even so 30 that's five five cups a day yeah you go through a fair bit of tea <laughs> thank you when i when when I, I i i make it i make tea in that <laughs> that holds a pint of or oh, half a liter of liquid uh, and i generally make <laughs> uh, either coffee or tea will be in that um you don't like the taste at all yeah it's it is an acquired taste um uh, i mm, uh, I'm trying to say I mean a lot of people when they first drink it it's loaded with milk and sugar um, one, uh, I used to drink it like that and then one day I just decided that I wasn't going to have sugar anymore uh, and I just had coffee but uh, I still drink it with milk I can't I don't like black coffee um, I actually like latte coffee if I'm going to drink a posh coffee as I call it a posh coffee but I, it, it, there's, uh, there's just something odd with me that after six o'clock, because um, I have, it, it's not proper ground coffee, uh, it's instant coffee I drink. Uh, I like them both, they're different. Um, but after six o'clock it tastes a bit like dishwater, uh, as I call it. It gets very really sort of, um, yeah. so that's why I switched to tea after six o'clock. Yeah, again, tea's different. Uh, I quite like um, either Lady Grey or Earl Grey tea. 
I like that rather than rather than sort of uh, what would be the English breakfast tea. Um, my wife likes chamomile tea, but yeah, coffee tea, beer, beer, beers or lagers. They're in a quiet taste. Same sort of same sort of thing. Instant coffee. <laughs> Gold, gold blend instant coffee. It's a particular blend uh, that I like. Uh, the others, mm, I'm not keen on. So if if I'm if I if I go anywhere, um, like I go on holiday for example, and, and there's there's coffee, like for breakfast generally, coffee or tea available. I'll have tea. I won't have coffee because I only like either I say latte coffee or cappuccino. Lots of milk in it, shall we say. Uh, with with fresh ground coffee, um, but sort of filter coffee or or that sort of coffee, I find too strong and I don't like it. So I generally um, you know will have tea most of the time when I'm not at home. I'm talking again. I'm not doing pyrography. The bone structure around the eye at this bottom edge isn't quite like this. It does. It really. It doesn't cut the eye quite as much as it does on on humans. But uh, because I've done the head this far back, I can't really put the the bone structure in to my satisfaction to make it look like it. As it should be, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Excuse me a second, I'm just going to take this out of frame. to sort of hold it at arm's length and take a look at it so uh, what I kind of noticed in doing so is, is this area here is just too too light I need to uh, I need to tone it down darken it a little bit and the shape the shaping is a little bit off
Mm. <laughs> I've gone quiet now, haven't I? I'm kind of looking at this as um, kind of evaluating whether I finished with it. I, c I could go on for quite a long time. Just f I will say, I will describe it as fiddling with baits, and, and it might well improve it. On the other hand, it might not. Um, one of the things I still am not that good at is deciding when something is finished. So you know, it's still an area I need to uh, to practice on. But I am kind of thinking that this actually there's one area I've just seen that this is. Um, is almost done. The area I've just seen is one that's over here. This giraffe's head is okay, but just to the side of it here is a light light patch. It sort of looks a little odd. So I just want to extend the colouring just a little bit past his head. Or her head. Don't know whether it's male or female. It looked almost like there was a light shining out of its eyes or something, um, which just didn't look right. Okay, time to hold it at arm's length again. Uh, okay, well have a uh, good evening Eddie Folger. Thank you very much for that and uh, have a have a good uh, evening's rest. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to catch the microphone. You know what, I'm going to call that done. So let me turn turn the pyro off. Um, if I tip the camera up, I'm going to cover cover the face cam up. Um, but uh, you, there you go. I'll try and catch. See if I can get a better light on it. But let's put that's not a better light. That's definitely not a better light. Mm, getting good light uh, for this stream is quite difficult. Mm, we took that back over there. Uh, in fact, let me just turn the face cam off. So we lose that. See, so there we go. Now, if I bring that closer into different, let me move that. See if I can get uh, aim this down there like that. Uh, okay, camera's tilted. That's why. Okay, so I'm just trying to just trying to give you guys as good a picture as I can get of this. But um, now I'm going to call that done. I uh, as I say, I could probably go on fiddling for ages, but I'm not sure I'd improve it much. Obviously. Yeah, I'd get more practice out of doing another one than I would do continuing to work on this. But I think that looks, personally I think it looks quite good. Thank you all for the uh, the nice comments that you're making there. Um, I'm quite pleased, uh, Little there's little touches in there that I quite 
like these grass little bits of grass there with the shadow um, I, I, I'm looking at those and I'm really pleased with those just that little touch with the shadow that makes them look like they are actually there on the ground and the ground goes away from me um, I'm really pleased about just that li just those little some little things like that um, that make it uh, just make it a little bit add that little bit more for me you can see some areas where I should have done better but you know there always will be and since I since I created it I'm going to see a lot more than you guys will so I'm not going to point them out <laughs> um, but uh, that's one trick by the way Never, never point out your mistakes. Let other people see them if if they can, but most people won't. Um, so if you ever do any artwork and you're showing it to people, don't tell them what's wrong with it, because <laughs> um, most people won't see it. And I'm quite pleased with the way the elephant does tend to stand out from the background, uh, especially for some reason just down here. I can see it. You see, I I see quite clearly it stood in front of that background, and um, I quite like that. There's just and, and there's just a little bit of um, just a little touch of a reflection just off his, off his his body, which seems to add to that uh, to me. Oh well, I don't know. Theme hospital that that possibly makes um, all art uh, look exceedingly good to you um, but I'm sorry you're partially sighted um, obviously I wish you had perfect sight but there again having said which I don't what if you don't mind me asking what do you mean by partially sighted is it is it sort of needing glasses or uh, problems with the with your eyes um, that uh, restrict your sight you don't have to answer by the way if you don't want to uh, it is a personal question and thank you uh, fluffy twiggler I like the seat uh, now uh, interestingly I'm now looking at it I can see the sepia tones more than I could earlier on the stream uh, because it's not getting that direct harsh light off the overhead now. Uh, the colour, the, that sepia tone colour is showing up. Okay. Thank you for explaining uh, Theme Hospital. I, uh, I'm sorry you uh, you have that problem, of course. I I don't I don't know what you know. I obviously don't know what it means uh, to you, but I potentially understand the frustration because I have never needed glasses until the past sort of two or three years now and if I don't have them on now it's extremely frustrating to me so I I guess I know a little bit but nothing like um, what you've got there but yeah I'm quite enjoy quite like the colors on that I, it, it, it evokes to me that really that sunset sort of thing, but I quite like sepia toned um, paintings anyway, uh, or pictures. Um, I started doing, instead of black and white for airbrushing, I started doing sepia tone as well. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to take it one of two. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I thought you, you thought I thought you were referring to uh, unfortunately to the unfortunate condition that theme hospital has. Either or I thought you were just trolling me. Um, but yeah. So what am I thinking I'm going to do next, uh, Graya? Um, what I'm thinking of doing next uh, is a little bit more for the next stream, a little bit more pyrography or the next evening stream. I am thinking that I have a piece. I have a piece of wood here, 
And it's a it's a door hanger. Hangs on a door. And it's got it's it's <laughs> it's got sticky tape on it. <laughs> Which is gonna be interesting. What I'm gonna have to do is take that off and sand this. So everything's got one texture on it. Um but I suspect I'm, we, we're going to always be able to see where that was. But this is a door hanger. So what I am thinking about doing is seeing what I can do on that in, two, in, in one stream. So two hours. Um, so what I what I kind of thinking about is doing something on one, well, both sides. So one hour per side and just seeing what I can do. Um, there is somebody... Uh, well, you know, one of the, the people that's been in stream a couple of times that uh, I know is interested in, in foxes. So um, that seems like an interesting sort of um, thing to do because uh, animals are quite often easier to do than objects. So I was thinking whether or not I could do something like uh, a fox's head. Wouldn't be anything like the cats because... Um, the texture on the cats this this texture takes an awful lot of time to do so it would just be sort of shading and maybe even I'll try that uh, illustration style technique with the black line around the outside might be interesting um, but just seeing what I can do one hour per side see if I can do uh, a, a fox head on this side and maybe a curled up sleeping fox or something like that on this side in one um, both sides in one stream and just see what I can do it just as a challenge uh, and if I fail it'll go on longer but I'll learn something so that's what I'm thinking next um, but uh, once once after tomorrow shall we say or after we have finished that and I don't want it to take more than a couple of streams if I do uh, we're moving on to scraperboard I think for the next mainstream but I don't know what to do on that at the moment so if anybody's got any ideas looks like it was designed for painting this um yeah so um uh, what they're often done done is is like scrapbook type stuff is done on it or they you know take like um pest flowers or dried flowers and and glue glue them to these things uh, so I just saw this in one of the local craft shops and thought, well, I'll try it, see what I can do. It's it's a birch plywood, it's it's a nice light uh, birch plywood, so it should uh, it should take colour quite nicely. Architecture building and street scenes. Yeah. Sounds like a fun challenge. Yeah, then that's uh, um a, a couple of days ago, I think, Graham, and that was um, you know, just for that. Yeah, and then potentially, you know, it becomes more of a commercial uh, commercial thing to sort of sell something like that. Because I've got to buy the wood. <laughs> Unfortunately, it costs. It da daft as it sounds, I keep saying wood doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> um, but this kind of means you don't get it for free. Uh, and and clear good clear wood is um, it takes some hunting down and and what have you so it would be nice maybe to do something that somebody might want to buy um, at a reasonable price architecture uh, one of the things I kind of would like to be able to do and it it, it sort of suits the pyrographic style because it's a, it's almost like a woodcut style is something like um, a country cottage something like that. Um, so that's that's sort of getting to the buildings um, thing. I'm not sure. I can, well, at the moment, what I can't see in my own mind is is a street scene image. If I could see what see one in my own mind, then I'd probably have more confidence or interest in doing it. <laughs> Indeed, Graya. Um, that's that's the hardest thing I have um, is so, some things I can see in my mind but I can't get them down 
uh, on uh, on the surface of some kind um, so I can sort of see in my own mind the cottage but I can't actually work out how to put it on a piece of wood and Hmm. Might be an interesting. It'd be a small one to do on a piece of wood this size, because it would have to be hung. Um, but a cottage with a path, and on the other side, maybe sort of reverse it in a little way. Maybe night time. Typical. I'll, I'll put typical. So I'm, 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 I am waving a, a face cam which isn't turned on. Um, let me just turn that back on. Um, so a typical sort of country cottage, thatch cottage type thing. Uh, wouldn't be a lot of detail or something like that. Hmm, maybe I'll save that one for next time. But it, it's getting um, it's getting that seeing the scene in my own mind. If I can do that, then that's halfway towards getting it down on on paper. And sometimes what I end up doing is, is just trying to sketch it out. Because if I can't sketch it. I can't paragraph it, uh, which is why I often use sort of reference images because it's easier to assemble uh, um, a scene from you know from looking at reference images because it, it's it, you can put the bits together like a giraffe with an elephant even though I don't actually have one with with both of them on uh, an old timey looking paragraph. Interesting, you should say that, uh, Graya. reason I say it's interesting is because of uh, and I'm going to cover up the camera again that that's, a, that's an airbrush painting um, done in sepia uh, done in sepia so that's uh, sepia is 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 an odd color it's not actually brown but because um, sepia in theory comes from squidding but um, so I'm not actually sure why it gets called sepia but it's it's sort of the old photograph I guess is the brown uh, but that's um, an old scene actually actually it's a modern scene because it's a film set <laughs> but that sort of um, thing yeah hmm Plus there's a heck of a lot of detail in that so this sort of thing has to be done uh, you know to do something like that it would have to be done on there but uh, some sort of stylized uh, uh, thing like that hmm an interesting one to think about definitely But it'll be a little. It'll be a little while. I so say I'm going to try. Um, I'm going to try something really nice and quick on uh, on this, and then we'll uh, we'll think about paragraphy for the, uh, something like that for the next uh, paragraphic. Got plenty of boards like this now. I bought a few. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, if you've got any. Um, Got any photographs, um, Graya? Or you can point. Sorry, you can point me at any photographs. Then um, I uh, don't mind taking uh, taking a look. There's no reason why we shouldn't. Um, uh, I won't say copy, but you know, use uh, you, you um, use it as the the principal layout. Um, but next thing. You know the uh, scraper board is is the next one. I'll move. You know, I'll move on from the pyrography so that um, I don't get bored and you guys don't get bored. We try something different. I'm not quite sure what to do with that. I, that is well, that is black and white, of course. I'm assuming you guys have seen. I will assume. I'll make sure you've seen some pyro uh, some scraper board. Just in case you're wondering what it what it is, so uh, it's dusty. But that's um, that's a portrait, uh, a portrait done in scraper board. 
It's it's literally black and white lines. There's no grey in there at all. It's all black and white. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I haven't actually finished this one, but it's close. And this one, Earthrise, again black and white. Um, you can colour this stuff, or you can colour the white areas, not the black areas. But I'm not um, not ready to try that just yet because I've only done two pieces of scraper board. <laughs> You've just seen both of them, um, so that's that's. I'm gonna, I want to try another one of those. Um, just don't know what to do on it yet. So if anybody's got any thoughts, I don't mind uh, suggestions. Thank you very much. Both of which, both uh, both images of those were quite daunting to do uh, to start with. Um, but was, I. I've kind of looked forward to doing scraper board for a while because I do love monochrome images and I, and you know as you saw with the sepia uh, town there and I um, and and this guy John Miles I've done uh, I've done two or three black and white uh, monochrome with the airbrush of uh, of John uh, for my wife so um I kind of, I kind of knew what I wanted, you know, the, the style I was looking for. So whilst I was daunted quite a lot by it, um, I wasn't sort of completely clueless about it. Um, but now I'm completely out. I'm sort of out of ideas uh, of it. It, it should be quite easy because just about anything can be done in black and white. <laughs> but it's, it's like when somebody sort of. Uh, does something like says uh, you know think of a number and your mind goes blank and you can't think of something and um, it's a sort of perennial problem I have with art and doing something when I when I'm faced with that blank media I say blank canvas but but media whatever it is whether it's a piece of wood scraper board or sheet of paper it's always what can I do. <laughs> Everything just goes out of your mind. Um, maybe actually try one of those uh, street scenes. That could uh, could be a possibility. Kind of the the other thought that just came came to mind is maybe doing something like a killer whale. Might be interesting. Black and white, uh, a black and white killer whale in in a black and white um, image. Maybe something under sea. Don't really know. Anyway, that's something for me to think about. Um, and if you guys have any ideas, uh, obviously you're quite welcome to uh, to mention them. I'm going to call an end to the stream tonight. Uh, it's uh, it's about that sort of time anyway. Uh, I'm going to get a nice drink and. Uh, and have a rest before I go to bed as well. I want to say thank you all for watching uh, this evening and being in chat. It has been great fun um, you know, talking about art, talking about everything, uh, almost anything under the sun uh, and showing you some of the other work that I've done. If there's anybody watching who isn't following, I of course would encourage you to do so. That way you can, if you choose, ask uh, Twitch to notify you when I go live. On the other hand, if you would like to just follow me on Twitter, you can do that as well, as I tweet when I go live. And as I'm fond of saying these days, I tweet when I go live, not when I have my breakfast. So it will be art related if you get a tweet from me. And uh, otherwise, you're just quite welcome to drop in uh, on my next stream. will be one tomorrow night, to the best of my knowledge anyway, 8pm in the UK. Uh, it's 1900 hours GMT, or is two and a quarter hours ago in whatever time zone you are in now, but tomorrow. I generally stream seven nights a week from that sort of time. Maybe one tomorrow afternoon, not sure. And Sunday afternoon, again, not sure. That would be 
just depending on what's going on during the day and whether it's pouring down with rain this sort of thing but if I do do some streaming tomorrow afternoon it will be some more of this stuff some some jewelry making some chain making I've got one I would like to do some well my wife decided she would like this one actually turning into a bracelet this was a practice length so I need to complete that and I want to try out a few other uh, chain designs um, so I generally do this sort of well I, I, this will come into the normal sequence on an evening sometime but um, I enjoy doing this um, in, you know, at any time so it's a sort of a nice thing that I can slip in on a Saturday afternoon without starting uh, you know a new piece of art or something like that um, so you don't miss out on, on the normal stuff but anyway there we go there's there's a little bit of an advert thank you for your uh, comments uh, there Graya um, I appreciate uh, uh, the fact that you do like watching I wish everybody a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow bye bye